Hello, Coach Anush Gagwa here. Welcome to Your Life with Anush TV, the place to be to start creating the kind of life you've always wanted. Your go-to every week for your success, healthy lifestyle, and transformation. What is next for you in your life? Do you want a better relationship, a better career, more energy and abundance to do the things that matter to you? Only you know what is a must for you to change, and we're here to help you get there with the best tools and techniques in the personal development industry and inspiring interviews. And part of my promise to you is also to show you what's possible in life by showing you and sharing with you the success stories of real-time, highly successful people. Today, I'm so thrilled to share with you the story of an extraordinary entrepreneur, author, and CNN featured CEO, James Kinney. James Kinney was able to turn his $200 into $1,280,000 in business in over three years. He has built five companies. He's now heading LA's fastest growing business and life performance company called 30,000 Feet. He's an amazing leader and he's the author of a super inspiring book called Living at 30,000 Feet. Insights for post-college America. And with me today is James Kinney. Hi, James, again. Hello. How are you? Excellent. Thank you so much for being here. You know, I read your book in one day, and it was so inspiring. It was very heartfelt. It was very real, and it was a life changer. And I can assume that it can truly change the life of someone that is really looking forward to make that shift. And my big thing to you is like a lot of times people say, we do want to have great lives, but people are stuck. And when they're stuck, they don't really rise above their situation to see what's possible. And for you, that shift happened on the flight four from JFK <laughs> to Los Angeles yeah. airport. Can you share more on that and how that shift happened to you? Yes, well, Anish, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, My pleasure. Honor, honor and a privilege. I've been a fan of yours for a long time, so it's really nice to be here. And before we go to the book, I also wanted to share that how you walk the talk. Yes. And I have seen you train this new amazing team of elite co coaches, and you are really a true leader and a visionary. And I love being a part of that as well, and you're truly walking the talk. So kudos to that. Thank you, you so much. Um, it's not easy, right? It's a lot of work to actually do what you say you're going to do. Yeah. Uh, but to go back to your, your question about how I uh, wrote the book and just started to really create the life that I wanted, uh, everyone has talked about there's no manual for life. Mm -hmm. And it's very true that there's not. Uh, what I found specifically is that we go through our education system, elementary school, junior high, high school, college, uh, no matter where you are in the world, there's that system of education. And in that system of education, it's largely academic, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of life coaching or life training, which is why people like you are so important. And in that journey, when you get a couple of years out of school, what I realized for myself in particular is that um, the dreams of childhood, you, you kind of, you walk out on the edge of the diving board, so to speak, and you have to jump into this deep end of life and there's no real directions or nowhere mm -hmm. to go. So you jump in the pool or in the ocean and you're there and you're lost and you don't know where to go, or what to do. And it's sink or swim. Sink or swim. That is adulthood, right? Motherhood, being a wife, being a husband, being a professional or, or whatever. So I started to just really experiment and follow my heart, which is what most people do. So the first thing for me was, was music. And my music career was a phenomenal experience in learning how to perform, engage an audience, evaluate my performance, measure that performance. A lot of things that I do uh, every single day, it enabled me to be creative as well as an executive um, and as a, a, a thought leader. So as you mentioned, I became bi-coastal because I sold one of my businesses and I was flying between New York and mm -hmm. Los Angeles. And I really noticed this pattern that when I was at 30,000 feet, I had the space and the quietness to think strategically about my life and what was happening, but also there was an amazing parallel by what I saw out the window and seeing everyone's taken a flight. And if you haven't, I, I, I encourage you to, to, <laughs> yeah. to hop on a plane. But when you look down and you see these amazing mountains and valleys and rivers and streams, like I talk about in, in the book, you just see that we don't have to micromanage it so much. God already has a plan 
or the universe. And even if you don't believe in God and you're an atheist, you can just see that it makes sense. Like there's a peak to the mountain, there's a bottom of it, and there's water in the middle and it runs down and that runs to the ocean, right? So in, in seeing that, I said, well, what if I could live a lifestyle where I never had to panic anymore because someone who is uh, you know, recovering from anxiety and depression and panic disorder, what if I didn't have to panic anymore? And I, and I just could, at those moments in my life where you're in the deep end and you're freaking out, mm -hmm. what's my next job? Who's my husband? Who's True. My, who, it's who's, all based on fear. Right, right. If I could go up to 30,000 feet and look at it from that perspective, I would just notice that everything is going to be okay. And if I can think strategically, like what we were talking about earlier, the how on how to be successful, I think success is a lot easier than people think. Emotions get in the way. Yeah, and then people are so caught up with their own life that they fail to plan their lives by design. And people go That's to a it. grocery shop and they have ingredient list, yet people go through life without having that vision of what's possible. And yeah. I would like to quote you a little bit, and in there you say, the time had come for me to make sense of all the nonsense. Despite my success in music, legal marketing, Wall Street, and entrepreneurship, I still felt defeated by love, defeated by newfound illness, and exhausted from a long boat of anxiety, depression, and alcohol abuse. On the outside, my personal life appeared flawless, and I seemed successful and happy. On the inside, it was a different story. That's about as real as it gets. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you made that shift, and it takes some vulnerability to really realize that. Yeah. So for you, you know, understanding that you got to be, you know, at your highest, best self, and mm -hmm. it is possible. What was that shift for you? What was that transition for you? And how did you tweak things around so that very soon you started running several, you know, more successful businesses and most importantly, businesses that you had meaning for you and mm -hmm. were purposeful, like 30,000 feet mm -hmm. and writing your book and inspiring all these people and changing lives. Mm -hmm. Um, four things, very specific. Um, forgive others, number one. Forgive your parents for what they did or did not do. Forgive your ex-boyfriend, forgive your ex-girlfriend. Um, that's what I did. I forgave people. Because mm. uh, walking around with the victim story does me no justice, and it, does, it doesn't do anyone justice who's listening to your show Absolutely. today. So number one, forgive others. Number two, forgive yourself. Mm -hmm. I just had a phone call this morning about forgiving myself. And it's a, it's a continual process that you're never going to be perfect. Perfection is not real. So forgive yourself for any shortcomings, past, present, or future. And it doesn't mean you don't want to be, you know, go for something better or greater. Doesn't mean it at all. It doesn't mean be your best self at the moment. Absolutely. Just forgive yourself. Because I think forgiving yourself creates peace of mind. And just then, mm -hmm. and that gives you the ability to get back on the horse and just go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so those are the first two. Um, number three is just creating a plan, um, but reverse engineering what the plan is. And I did a really powerful exercise. I was in London at, at the time. And I wrote down on a sheet of paper, every single thing that I had done in a cause and effects graph. Mm -hmm. So I use a little bit of my nerd, but <laughs> I put the event, cause, effect, event, cause, effect. And for those of you guys who are watching this, I highly encourage that you do this exercise. So go back to, for me, 1977. Event, I was born. Cause, I'm alive. Effect, I'm here on this planet. Right, and then I went elementary school. But what's interesting is mm -hmm. that when you start to look at things like, oh, we moved to Ohio, like for me. Right. Uh, I went to this college. Then you start to think about, well, if I would have went to this college, how would it have been different? And if I would have married this person or did this, how would that would have happened? And you can start to see how those patterns are showing up currently. So in terms of making your next move your best move, which I always talk about, life is chess, not checkers, you can really start to look at your decision-making patterns mm -hmm. subconsciously and really start to dis discern how to do and what to do. The fourth one is that I realized it's not about me. Mm. When you can take yourself out of the 
about me. I, I just think we're conditioned to have a privileged, well, we're conditioned to have a victim mentality first. Then we're conditioned. The blame game. Yeah, right? Yeah, guilt, blame, anger, shame. I, I did work with Lucinda Bassett, who's a world-renowned stress and anxiety coach. And guilt, blame, anger, shame was her thing. And it was, it's brilliant. I, and so I, I always talk about that. But when I realized that there, there's, there's no victim, because it's like the world's smallest violin, like no one cares. People die every single day. And the world never stops. I mean, the biggest presidents, the biggest leaders, the biggest spiritual leaders in the world have died and there might be a month of mourning for a huge Jesus level person, right? But that life goes on. But the world keeps spinning. Mm -hmm. So the victim mentality doesn't serve you or anyone else. But then being very clear that it's not about you is a powerful thing too. So for me, what it was is that I've, I've been a star my whole life and that's been amazing. But the cool thing I can say about being a star now is that it's so cool that I'm not a star mm -hmm. in an egoic sense. So it's not about significance or feeling no. important because you're great. It's about what you do. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. if I can just be who I am, right, which is a powerful thing, forgiving myself, forgiving others, then I realize you can be on the couch right now at home with no job, but just be the star. Know that you're a star. That's a phenomenal thing just to have cognizant consciousness about that. But you can be a star in being of service to others. You can be a star at being an employee, a star wife, a star husband. Yeah, and oh. that star thing is just being in charge of your own life. You are the captain of your own ship. That's it. And that's your life. Yeah. And when you think about from um, an astrophysics perspective of what a star is, mm. most people forget that a star has a light that cannot be dimmed. Mm. I mean, a star has... You know, we talk about light years, millions of years of light shine from a star. Here we go. So the next time you, you know, go outside and look at that star up in the sky, think about how powerful that is. And, and guess what? The other amazing thing about a star is this. A lot of us feel like, and I know in our industry too, like, oh, I'm not Tony Robbins. I'm not Oprah. Yet. <laughs> Yet. You are. Yeah. That. But, ch but check this out. We can drive around the planet Earth for days mm -hmm. and can never count all the stars that are in existence. So what that means is there's room for everyone. No one has to feel like I can't shine. And then you talk about how there are 7 billion you know, people on this planet at this point, and it's like, what is your brand? And yeah. you talk about branding a lot, and I how do. important it is to embrace all of us, yeah. like honor all of you at the same time and not be afraid to know you know, not to be afraid to be who you are at your core. And I think a lot of times to what happens to people is that we try to become someone else that we're not. And that's when the, you know, burnout happens. That's where people burn out. Ag and ag agreed. I think our, our differences are amazing. Mm -hmm. Like why, you know, I, I, I'm so blessed to have friends that are, I was on a plane with a guy from Hong Kong on Friday and we just had the best conversation. A Chinese guy from Hong Kong. We just, there's no difference in me being black and from Texas and living in LA and doing business in New York. There's zero difference between he and I. We had the same objectives of what we want out of life and what we want to do in this world. I was teaching him things, he was teaching me things. And it's, it's, it's in those moments at 30,000 feet <laughs> where you just realize there are no differences. And, you know, of course, being in the United States, mm -hmm. you know, Warren Buffett talks about it, about winning the ovarian lottery. First, it's such Absolutely. a privilege and it is such a, you know, we have so many opportunities, but very often it's not about having these opportunities. It's about making that shift inside and taking, being in charge of your own life and making that transformation happen. And what I loved in your book, you talk about, you know, micro change and transformational and gradual success mm -hmm. instead of failure. And again, sustainable change is possible only over time versus overnight. And yeah. I feel like so many people are stuck because they think things are going to change 
you know, overnight and they want that magic formula, but there is no magic formula. The only magic formula is that where do you want to go and what are you going to do every single day of your life to go from where you are to where you want to be. And you know, you have built this huge thing for you over the years, patiently, consistently and persistently. Tell us more about that realization of, oops, things are not going to happen overnight, but things are going to happen over time. Mm, great question. And thank you for that acknowledgement. You know, I think the first thing is this. Um, Knowing that, you know, holism is a word that you and I use a lot. And holism is the belief that all things affect one another. I've realized in my career, and now at 38, how my music career has influenced my Wall Street career and my law firm career influenced 30,000 feet and entrepreneurship. And it's all one thing because now I have this big tool chest that I get to pull stuff from. So I think... Um, Number one, acknowledging that, you know, people say, oh, that was a waste of time. Mm. I dated this person for four years and it didn't work out. What Wasted did you learn? Time. But you learn something. So you know what to do the next time. Mm -hmm. So I think put a value, an associated value on those opportunities that you had from a failed business, a job that you didn't like, right? And knowing how to quantify the value for those things, I think is very important. Um, but in terms of micro change and how to create those systems, again, you know, my work is around systems for success, not being emotional about them, allowing ourselves to have emotions and to be human in our personal lives, but in terms of what we want to accomplish. Almost like to a science. The how, that, that's it. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, so yeah, in, in, in my book, when I talked about you know, value plus experience equals a returning customer, when you can put that into a formula and have that as a mantra almost, you know, just get the emotion out of it. Am I creating value? Yes. Mm -hmm. Am I creating a great experience? Yes. Dan, done, then it's a returning customer. Um, but in terms of m m micro change, I think you, you brought up a very valuable point. Social media, mass media, shows like So You Think You Can Dance, American Idol, mm -hmm. X Factor, they've conditioned us as a society that you don't have to do the work anymore. You don't have to hop in a van and play shows around the country and earn one fan at a time. Mm -hmm. You can literally just go on Oprah or Ellen DeGeneres and become famous overnight via YouTube. But you're a great example. No, people are watching the show right now and they don't realize the hours of work that it took just to get here. And the weeks of work it takes just to plan one and to coordinate one. So the on-camera time is the shortest amount of time. And that's how it is in life, you know. That's it. People see, you know, the end result yeah. and they compare themselves to the end result and they think oh my god i'm yeah. a failure if i don't do that yeah. but the whole point is people get rewarded for the things that they get awarded in public but they have been getting ready for that for years and people That's might it. get famous overnight through opera but how did they get to that path to being featured yeah. with oprah and two in two in two points there i told one of my clients once look be the iceberg some people look at me and they go, oh my God, he's so da da I'm like, you have no idea. It's, I only show you the iceberg because I learned a long time ago. I don't, I don't really need to be flashy. You, you're only going to see so much of what's actually here and underneath there's a whole thing. That iceberg analogy is also good for someone. All the underneath part of the water is the work. And then what you see at the result is just the tip of the iceberg. And I think it's a great way to live life and to do business. Some of the most successful people I've ever met, female, male, wherever they are, European, African, etc., they're, they're, they're not really trying to show you the whole iceberg. They, they'll show you a little bit, and then there's a lot underneath it. And, you know, just kind of wrapping up because we're running out of time. Okay. You know, you talk in your book how important it is to protect your time. PYT. PYT, your time and money. Yes. And also you talk about the business of doing and what mm -hmm. a difference it makes to actually and to actually do get things done. Because unless you put things from your head to from your heart on paper mm -hmm. and then schedule them and make them real, nothing is gonna change. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that and let's just kind of inspire people to action because yes, you can have all of these visions, but unless you do that thing, nothing is gonna change in your life. Mm. I'll tell, a, I'll tell a really quick story since we're running out of time. Trees don't fall down by themselves. They require axes and effort. Mm -hmm. That's Simple. it. Simple. 
Yeah. Yeah. So all that you, you can manifest that a tree will fall. You can question whether if, if it falls in the woods, will people hear it if it's a sound and all the old stuff. But at the end of the day, there's an axe and there's you and there's a tree. And the only way it's coming down is if you grab the axe, you pick it up and you chop it. And if anyone's ever tried to chop down a tree, it is a ton of work. You're going to want to quit about 17 times before that tree falls. And if there's no one else there in the forest and you have to sleep that night and you need a fire, that tree's coming down. Yeah. So look at, you look at your business, look at your life in that context. No one's gonna do it for you. No one is here to cut down your own tree. You can go and sharpen the saw or the ax to make it easier and that's where strategy comes Absolutely. into play. Absolutely. But you gotta do the work and it's not about that instant gratification. People just see the trees falling down and they think, hey, I want that end result. I want that magic formula. Yeah, but at, at some point, whether you have a chainsaw or whether you have an ax, a sharp ax, a dull ax, the strategy is an important part. I think working with people like yourself is a great way to get there faster. But yeah, that's where coaching comes into place. Yes, but at some point, you have to pick up the ax. If, if, if you're tired of being overweight, if you're tired of being anxious, depressed, sad, you want more money, whatever it is that you want, and it's not about being famous, who cares about fame? It's about being happy with who you are, with the, with the opportunity you have for your 90 years here, your 60 years here, or whatever it is. At some point, the ax has got to get picked up. Yeah, and it is up to you to make that change and go and get things done. Yes. And yes, you can have coaches that are going to help you get there faster, but unless we'll teach them how to, you know, to lift mm -hmm. the weights, but we're not going to lift the weights for them. No. So it's that change. It's that decision. Yeah. My last point is this. You can't talk a tree down. Mm -hmm. People do too much of this. Yeah. Not enough swinging. All right. Well, thank you so much, James. Thank it you, has Anish. been an amazing experience, and thank I'm looking you. forward to see you change even more lives, and I'm really excited to be a part of it as well. Looking forward to what's next, thank and you so much. thanks again for being here. Thank you. I have to go change my shirt and put on some work boots because I have a tree to chop down. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. Keep on watching the show and start making healthy little tweaks in your life, and pretty soon you will start living the life that you deserve and desire at your core. Did you like this video? If you did, please share with this video with your friends and the people that you care about the most. And if you want even more insights and invitations to empowering events that I personally go to, then come on over to anushgaugua.com and leave your comment and sign up for email update. That's all for today. In the meantime, remember that life is what you make it. And Make your life outstanding, and we're just here to help you get there week to week with the show. The sun is rising, feel the warmth of